boy clock. I think that's the thing they say. Um, I hope this is working. Still figuring out all this technical stuff. I don't know. It's okay. I'm talking to myself right now. It's only the people who are watching this later that are going to see this little bit of fumbling at the beginning. Oh my gosh, I've got to stop letting my um, neuroses show through like that. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyway, I should have promoted, shouldn't I? Uh, it's okay. Alrighty, I've got Tuning Workshop here. This was a set released at the end of last year. It's a beautiful little set, but again, like this is, well, let me step back a moment. For those who are watching this on the rewatch, last week we built Main Square. Which is a set I didn't expect to like, but I found myself at really liking quite a lot. It is an awesome little set. Um, it's very definitely a play set. It's not a uh, AFOL set. It's not meant for AFOL's uh, Lego cities. And for the people who are dropping in, because I'm no longer talking to myself, but that's great, uh, say hi in the chat. Um, I feel less alone that way. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, I'm quickly recapping what we did last week because I want to build on that this week with the tuning workshop here. Uh, this is what I did last week. This is where it ended up. I wasn't feeling 100% last week. But we built Main Square. And I don't know how that's showing up to the camera because there's a slight lag. But here we have what we did with Main Square. We converted it to the modular standard, really, and just modified it. Did not mock it? just modified it by making little changes here and there, such as our little crenellations up here, um, added a few details to the front, made sure that we had uh, the modular standard, which means those little technicals there to connect it to. Let's see if that shows the... Hang on, that's probably the right way to show it to camera, right? Will that work? Hopefully this works. Hopefully the camera's seeing that right. right. There's a lag. I don't, I don't know, what am I doing wrong with the technical settings that I've got that much lag? Uh, I've got to figure this stuff out. Anyway, so that's, yeah, where we ended up. Just little details, like added the little flower bed at the front, gave a little bit more detail to the basement bits, because I like that, that's, it, that's there in the set. Um, I just wanted them to be in the set a little bit more, add those little details, because the one that you get in the main square set, again, it's a play set, so it's a bit featureless, it's a bit blank. And there's nothing wrong with that, but real buildings aren't blank. So by adding in that little extra bit of texture and detail here and there, it, it makes a difference, you know, and that's that's what we did. Um, that's pretty close to what the set looks like anyway. Um, put my ball on back. Still haven't finished the back of the wall. I'll get that finished. Suddenly. The other bit we did was the park. So you get a whole bunch of really cool little mini sets in the main square set. Uh, different little instruction manuals and all the rest. It really does tie well into the cartoon. Uh, there's a cartoon to go with it, which I had watched last week. I had no clue about. This week I do. The cartoon's really good. Uh, way better than it, it has any right to be, actually. And yeah, there's little things like the little statue in there. So I wanted to keep that detail. Um, I did uncuff his hands because if you're in on the joke, it's great. There's a thing in Lego City Adventures called No Hands Day, and he's the, kind of the mascot and the reason it exists. But outside of that, it, it was a weird thing to have the statue looking like that. Um, and we gave extra detail to the trees that kind of bordered the set. Uh, again, nothing too complex, just covered a few basic tree techniques there. Uh, so you guys, if you're only watching now, that's flower stems. Hey Matthew, how you doing mate? So yeah, we use flower stems and flowers, and everything is actually really rigid here, but the combination of that and the leaf parts gives it that flow and curve to the shapes. Kept the stage, but again made just very minor changes to the speakers themselves. Oh, and I don't know if I pointed this out last week. Check out, um, hopefully it appears on this camera, behind her ear, that little uh, hearing aid. I love that feature in the set. And I did keep the tram stop, but the thing is, the tram stop needs stickers. So, 
I'm going to put this aside. We're going to finish up a little bit more of last week's set and hopefully I've got the bits I need because I did prepare. Well, I used the word prepare and it's not real. Because not real. <clears throat> like I had a tram around here somewhere. I've got to find that tram. I wanted to show you guys a tip, a trick and a tip. I hate stickers, okay? Hate them, loathe them with a passion, mostly because they are virtually impossible to get on straight and correct. But this tram stop looks very blank without the uh, bits for the tram, well, to make it look like a tram stop. So I'm gonna show you my favorite trick for stickers. This here, now this is just the uh, surface cleaner that my partner uses. Um, you can use any surface spray for this trick. It doesn't have to be this one. The, it is important though, uh, if it's precious bricks, you might want to test it first. Not all cleaners are created equal. Eucalypt, for instance, does definitely damage Lego bricks. Uh, this one though, it's a very mild surface cleaner. Windex works as well. So th those are the kind of cleaners I'm talking about because what I'm about to do is I'm just going to spray it on the brick and it will evaporate very quickly but it'll give me that slight chance to adjust the sticker and get it straighter than it would otherwise be because yeah, it doesn't look like a tram stop without the stickers so let's, let's make that happen, eh? Here we go, just spraying a little bit on not too much, don't want too much just going to dribble on use my finger there already it's dripping but that's okay it dries super duper quick. And pick the camera sticker here. And you will still want to kind of mostly get it as straight as you can. Which you, we all know to be very tricky and hard. But there we go. Got that little bit of slide allowed. And of course the cleaner will evaporate super duper quick. And that's about as straight as I think that sticker could possibly be on. Yeah. Feeling good about that. Let's try the next sticker. I think I am going to keep these sets uh, built up. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extend it. Just a little. Again, not much. But keep the idea of a modded kind of mini Lego City happening. And just put a train track around the edges and that'll be something nice and quick and simple I can kind of pull out for displays and the like and there we go it's not exactly perfect but certainly straight up than I would have been able to achieve if I had not used the spray there I'm happy with that it'll do it'll do um, the set does encourage us to put more stickers here for the lockers but for that one, I think that's better achieved using printed parts and certainly there's the height there that I can put headlight bricks there and then just like a keyhole um, printed part that comes in quite a lot of sets or a little keypad or something. And that'll give it that little extra detail, but at least this way it now looks very clearly like a tram stop. So yeah, I don't know. Um, let me know what you think there in the comments, how you feel about stickers, any questions you might have. Um, it's not just me here, so, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, this is where we ended up last week, and I just want to keep extending that idea. Uh, the train, you know what, Matthew, I have not double checked if the tram actually does fit onto train, I'm not even sure where the train track is hidden in this room, it's been a very long time since I've used any, um, no, no. It's all out uh, in tubs that my son has not touched in a while, so I would actually have to go get some train track to double check. I think they would, though. Uh, it does look to be correct, visually. Um, I haven't double checked, so uh, I think that would be important to double check. Because certainly it would be easily motorised. This would be very easily motorised. There's more than enough room to put everything you need inside there. There are another few little changes I think I will make to the tram. It gets a little gappy when you open it up. You can see uh, the gaps. But that's 
actually pretty easily fixed. Something just to kind of slide in between and cover the gap as it moves across would be very easy to sort out there. Hey Liam, how you doing mate? Uh, thank you for joining us. Hope you've had a good week. I uh, was just looking at what we did last week and you know, I wasn't feeling uh, the best last week. I was feeling a little under the weather. Hay fever, man. Uh, like spring, spring. Oh, hay fever. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, mm. other people like spring. I like the middle of winter when it rains because I don't sneeze then. Uh, it's a bit cold, but I can work with that. Anyway, there we have it. We had the two halves of what became of last week's main square and gonna keep this thing kind of extension, this modding of sets going with the tuning workshop here. Uh, we'll open that in just a tick. Just realized, just realized I need a base plate so I'm grabbing that. Barely organised at all. I feel a little bit guilty. A lot guilty. A lot. You know. So here we go. Tuning workshop. Let's get this puppy open. Now this, on the surface, looks like a pretty cool set. I like that there's lots of little vehicles in here. I think there's a, a lot to be done with it. The reason I showed you the sticker uh, trick just then is because there are definitely, again, things in this set that they're just going to need the stickers. It's going to need that little uh, Trevor's tuning on it. I reckon the used car thing is going to need it because I want to keep that idea of uh, a, a tuning workshop car park lot in the Lego City uh, by just basically modding this set, not taking it too far, not, not turning it into a full scale mock, but keeping the heart of the set and making it something that will fit into a Lego City. And, and as I said, I, I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'll put a little road in front of these uh, buildings, do a rear side, and that way I can wrap a train track around the outside. And about as simple as you can get, um, but many AFOLs have that as their Lego city in the house. That's the kind of thing that looks great at an exhibition. So yeah, yeah, that's where this is gonna go in a little bit. And hello DC Bricks, how you doing my man? All right, so. Pulling bits out of the bag. Now Liam and DC, uh, I know you guys were here last week. This is another set that ties into uh, the Lego City cartoon, Lego City Adventures cartoon. So we get the same run of characters here, some of which are included in the set. I hadn't watched it last week. I, I didn't know anything about it last week. I do this week. I've, I've watched through the whole thing this week. They're only short episodes. They're like 11 minutes long, but there's 22 of them. Way better than that. It's only right to be. And yeah, you know, Poppy. Uh, I should check your name. Freya McLeod, our little fire chief. One of my new favourite characters. That might have been louder than I needed to be. Baby Yoda's been announced? It might just be the worst kept secret they've had in a while, but they have, have a habit of having badly kept secrets. I don't feel exactly comfortable talking about rumours, and, uh, and until I've seen official press announce it, I'm not going to confirm nor deny that Baby Yoda exists, because I have no way of knowing and the folks are getting pretty good. Mm -hmm. I saw something do the rounds this week. Oh yeah, a UCS DeLorean. Uh, um, and, and like it wasn't, you know, it was just this mock maker creator like myself had just kind of thought, hey, you know what would be a cool way to show off this mock I made? Oh, I'll put it onto a box. Um, but people fell for it left and right, hook, line and sinker. So, wow, bags on the floor I guess. A bit of water. That's probably easier to do. Maybe not sure what else we need to be built in. We'll figure this out in the moment. Yeah, I think the uh, garage comes last, and that's the part I'm interested in. So, I don't know. The garage without cars isn't isn't much. So let's start with that one. Let's get 
series he doesn't have the tool belt that's a recolor of Batman's utility belt I don't know if we've actually seen it in that color on a Batman yet so it's kind of cool to see that there and being used in other sets uh, gonna make my life a little easy to kind of find parts here by getting these parts out of the way Disneyland my my man Liam that's Lucky you! When we can all get out of the house again, eh? Us poor people here in Melbourne are going to be on lockdown for a little, uh, little more. Orange brick separator in this set. I believe Main Square had the teal brick separator. Could be wrong. It's been a whole week since I built it. Apparently, a $100 bill is all you need to buy a used car in LEGO City. Prices are good. Couldn't get a lightsaber for that cost. Not at all. Not at all. What style lightsaber are you going to get, Liam? Alright. Starting with the building. Putting motorcycle wheels on. Not the most exciting part of the build. No. I'm a little tempted to just... I hate turning pages on instruction manuals. Probably should do it the vanilla way, but I don't wanna. Like, do I really need instructions for what's a car, you know? It's not that many spots that extra bits can go here. And I'm not sure I want the weird, uh, jet engine it's encouraging me to build for the bike ed either. It's totally in keeping in tune with what Hal would do, mind you. A dark side light and saber. Yeah, I, I gotta... I don't know, I don't lean towards the dark side, That that's not who I am, but I've got to admit, the red's the cooler colour, isn't it? I can see it. Smaller cars too. No. With the advent of speed champions and moving up to the eight wide standard, it becomes interesting. Uh, you have to make choices about what fits into the Lego City. I grew up with uh, four wide cars. Six started to appear um, as I entered my dark age, I think it was. But the old four wide cars do hold a special. Actually, I like prefer them six wide. I don't know. What do you guys reckon? What, what size Lego car do you reckon belongs in a Lego city? Mm. I mean, it's like to be the only one who prefers them. Ah. Well, the six wide, like I said, I think that's about the right balance point. I think eight starts to get too large, too thick, too wide. Five works, but five is a little hard to build to. Mm. Alright, and car taking shape here. Very simple little car. There's only a thousand parts in this set. It's not a very big set. Six wide from Matthew there. Yep, yep. I'm with you. Oh, establish that. Oops. There we go. Coming apart just a little in my hands, that's not 
Now one of the things I don't really like, and coming back to talking about stickers, using stickers as uh, license plates, that doesn't work for me. I'm not going to judge, but I'm not about to start pulling out the sticker sheet for this one and doing that. Not for every part anyway. I keep on bumping this little bit off the back. Oh my gosh, how did you spot survive playtesting? Oh my gosh. Why do I have... I shouldn't have an extra one of those, should I? Should I? I don't know. Here we go. Little mini smart car thingy. Very tiny. Very tiny. But that'll work because if we're adapting the tuning workshop to a... Um, to the smaller stand... Oh, that's why. This was, was meant to be saved for this bit. Of course it was. I don't even need instructions for this one. There's, there's only so many ways this can go. So, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's it. Uh, usual variety of spears. I sh you should have gone under there, shouldn't you? No? I have too many of those left over. They probably belonged on the motorcycle somewhere. That's fine. Um, all right, here we have the uh, sticker sheet for this here. Let's give it a shot. Uh, where did I put that spray? So for those who didn't see it earlier, to make applying stickers easy, very simple, any household surface spray cleaner will do. You don't want it to be too strong a surface cleaner. Water kind of works, but water takes longer to evaporate. You want the kind of spray cleaner you can just kind of spray on there. Move around with your finger. I'll just dry my off on my pants. That's all good. And that's the wrong sticker. I don't want that one yet. I'll leave that there. I want this sticker. And you still kind of want to put it into position as best you can. But what that spray underneath does before it dries gives you the chance to kind of wriggle it into position. Um, and there you go. That's that's pretty square. Oh. Yeah, that works, that works. See you again soon, uh, Liam. And Disneyland. I want to go to Disneyland now. Oh, my arm is twisted. I don't know, maybe once the world's a little safer. Um, I, th I think that's got to be the... Oh, very definitely do need to build. This is one of the little bits I've been looking forward to with this set, this little pug here. Uh, I'm interested to see how they do the caravan too, and now I'm, I'm just going to assume that as a used car salesman, he's not a good guy. He's probably a little bit, you know, fits the stereotype. Let's grab bag number two. Here we are. Ah. Hang on, so Matthew, for tinting car windows. Spray adhesive, uh, sorry, um, spray cleaner is what they recommend you apply first to kind of get it s sticky and, and give it a chance to move. I'm learning things here. Tell me more, tell me more. There we are. A little pug dog. Bulldog? I don't know. That's quite a nice collar on it too. That's a lot of... Very definitely looks like a collar. I'm not sure I've seen this mold or I haven't uh, had it in my house yet. Yeah, that is a beautiful little puppy there. Beautiful little puppy. Now, possibly less than trustworthy used car salesman here. Yeah, yeah. I was unaware of this. Okay. So it's, uh,. My Lego skills might actually have some kind of use elsewhere in the world. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Except everybody apparently who's ever dealt with car window tinting already knew this stuff. Okay, okay. Well, for those who didn't... <laughs> um, yeah. Here we go. Adding more little bits and bobs. There we go. I love these profile bricks. 
They're one of my fave little bricks. This will be our little doghouse coming together. Interesting that they've chose. There's not a lot of strength there on the back. Now I'll probably shake this up a little bit. Um, once we really get building or converting. Modding? Modding? Brickmania. What is a set I recommend? That's that's an individual choice, I think. Uh, what kind of sets do you like, Brickmania? So there are a lot of good sets coming down the pipe or just being released. Uh, we're seeing a lot of news about the next wave of sets coming up. Oh my gosh, my Christmas list is getting so big. So big. Alrighty. Here we go. Our little uh, dog bowl out the front. Bits for a straggly little tree. I assume it's going to be a tree tomorrow. I'm wondering if I should put Duke's name on his doghouse. Maybe uh, might get a wooden board actually underneath. Maybe just flip the colour of that part. Here we go with Int again the same thing that uh, we saw last week. Lego trees, just by their very nature, tend to be very up, down, left, right straight. I'm not sure that works. So that's let's get something to fix that. My trusty box of leafy bits. Let's just give it a little bit of angle, not too much. By using hopefully I've got some green bitty bobbies to do this. So that'll help with the leafy bits. That'll help with the flower stem. So just keeping with the uh, technique we used last week here. Not getting too creative, not reinventing the wheel. I don't know, for some people it might be the first time to see this technique. There are so many ways you can build trees. Some hold up stronger and better than others. And the fact that this particular version holds up so well is why I like it. Um, I'm also a big fan of, I think I mentioned last week, I'm a very, love the idea of um, weaving? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what the name for that technique would be. It's not one I was shown. I, I mean, I, I doubt I was the first person to come up with it, but that's one of those things I just kind of sat down and discovered for myself one day. And, and you know, others will have done it too, I'm sure. Um, I, I've certainly seen it in other people's builds uh, since then. Um, and, yeah, I just haven't seen a name for it. Um, whereas, weaving these together, that's, that's something... I've never been very good at it. That's something I saw others do first. But you can slowly connect the leaf parts like that. And if you do that on a big enough scale, they can become their own thing too. You just need a whole pile of them. Yes, got some leafy bits. Uh, Alrighty, here we go. Got enough to kind of make this work. Let's shake up the kind of little tree we have. I like the idea it's a bit sparse. It doesn't feel right to have this one be too leafy. So, yeah, I've got to keep calling it the leafy parts. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. There we go. Still pretty sparse as trees go. Um, on any other, oh, I might just get a little bit more there because I do have a few extra that I pulled out. Um, oops. Just kind of get that into position right. There we go. 
just takes away that right angles look to it. Uh, the interlocking leaves um, as a technique. No, I wouldn't. Legal and illegal as techniques in the Lego sense comes down to putting pressure on the bricks that will cause them to break. The leaf parts are meant to bend. They've got that little bit of bend to them, so I wouldn't describe it as an illegal technique. I don't know if you'd ever see it come from internal Lego designers because it's not a very secure or uh, um, stable connection, but I wouldn't... It certainly doesn't put pressure onto the bricks, so I wouldn't worry about that uh, side of it. Your bricks will be fine if you do it. So. Likewise that. That's... I'm surprised we haven't seen this in a set, actually. Um, you know, that's such a simple way to just break off from the grid. I think we saw something similar in one of the recent modulars, I think, but they used the very small leaf parts um, to do something similar. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, I mean, I've got the detective office down here, and again, that's a set built for adults, and the trees also have that very left right kind of it just they don't look like real trees look so well, here we are back to building caravans back to building caravans we sausages i wonder if this is a connection part at the moment that'll be cool that's one of my favorite connection parts of the, the sausages I, i'm wondering if that's how it gets used here Which set was it uh, that used that? Uh, Brick Mania? Righty. Maybe getting some building happen. Here we go. Starting to look like a caravan. I feel like there should be wheels here. Why can't I see wheels? I guess they'll turn up or not. Oh, that's probably why. There's going to be another bag, isn't there? I don't have enough parts here to finish off a whole caravan. It's interesting that they've got split. Again, I like the idea. Like, this set has a whole bunch of different instruction manuals. The kind of thing that is great to get, you know, kids or families or, or siblings as a gift for, like, Christmas or whatever gives you that chance to kind of spread out the building and the whole family can join in. Got the Razor Crest this week. Um, Father's Day and birthdays kind of blend together a little in this house. And the little one had really been wanting the Razor Crest and kind of... It's his for now. Hopefully he gets bored with it and I can get one. Or I'm just going to have to get my own copy. I don't know yet. But the Razor Crest is just one instruction manual. And so, because it was a gift for me, him, all of us kind of wanted it, and Mum wanted to get into the h and too, and then all of a sudden, no, I'm sorry, there's only one instruction manual. You're going to have to take turns to build, or I can pass you the parts while you do the building. So. The bookshop, yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that one having a little bit more going on uh, with it. I liked that. Um, I'd have to look up a picture to, to see it. So here we go. This is what bag two gives us. Not much happening there. There's meant to be a tile there. I probably buried it somewhere. Or about and probably over my shoulder. Ah. What did I do with my tile? It'll turn up. Little white tile somewhere. Oh, hang on. That's going to be the first part of the next bag. Yeah, bag three. Yeah, if you're lucky enough to have a pick a brick wall near you, and I've got uh, thankfully two in the city, they've had the tiny green leaves on them for quite some time. They've also had these, uh, both of these, uh, at different times on the walls. And so I've just. I don't know if you can really see it, but up 
there. I've got a whole bunch of pick a brick cups and some of them are full just of, of those. It makes making foliage a lot easier using it a lot of the time. Ready. Because that's part of it. It's it's tricky making organic looking foliage without making it look dense because real trees are dense. And of course the trade-off there is part count. You, you need more parts to make that work. Right. Continuing building our teeny tiny little caravan that our used car salesman does trade out of. And here we have wheels. Now it's starting to look like I've got all the parts for a caravan. Looking awesome. More white macaroni bricks. Lots of those. parts to start locking it all in. I got parts on the wrong side? Uh, I'm not sure. I did. And my two's on the wrong side. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't be the first time I misbuild something. ADHD. Probably shouldn't say that too, out loud too often. I do though. Thanks for the heads up. Figured it out. Yeah. Looking a little better now. <laughs> Interesting method of doing this. They're the one by twos with the shorter curve. I should have another one floating around somewhere. I guess it'll turn up. There it is. Hiding under a, a panel. Alrighty. Caravan y kind of look. I don't think I'm just putting the sticker on this one, but I should put the window glass in it. I always feel like there's an up and a down to these things. to look like a real caravan, bit by bit. Here we go. Yeah, that's looking good. Looking good. Alrighty. A little bit more building here. And then we'll kind of start integrating them all together. I don't know. I feel like the building's taking a little longer than it should, actually. We're already 40 minutes in. My jump does some bits. Alright, so here we go. Lid goes on. And we've got an openable side, or it will be in just a moment. That's what we're setting up for, anyway. Because, of course, they're, they're a bar, essentially. A curved bar, mind you. Which opens up a lot of possibilities for using them as a connection part. Again, it's not necessarily the most secure part. Um, lining it up. And there we go. Back of the uh, caravan there. Which makes the inside kind of usable. Wheels, put those on. Why do I have 
Where are those? You should have gone there, shouldn't you? Yeah. Leave it All right. Sticker time. I think we will. I'm, I'm going to peer pressure. It's getting to me. More stickers. More spray adhesives. I keep wanting to say spray adhesive, but it's not spray adhesive. Side, but that's why we use the spray. There we go. Yep, wriggling it in a spot. Put that off to the side so it can dry for a moment. I'm missing something there underneath, aren't I? Go. Should have put this on first. some flags for our top. Bring that up there. And there we go. Our little caravan. Might change the angle of the flags, I don't know. Looks about right. Door opens up of course. I think I might weak the inside wall, I don't know. The black, once you actually start looking in, you really do see those. They don't need to be there, so bye bye to those. Just gonna... Yeah, I feel better about that already. So. All right. Now, little used car salesman making very important phone calls. Hello? Hello? What? Reception's bad. That's because I'm a Lego figure. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so bag three would have us build another car, and then there's another car, and another. Though I do like his hairstyle. I'm missing haircuts. Like, yeah, I, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get the next haircut. I, I'm just going to have, like, awful hair for a long time, and it is what it is, I guess. Uh, let's get on to the, the meat and veg of the build. Um, start off by building it uh, vanilla style. And my back, it's minor technical hiccup there. Sorry guys, I hope that kind of came back. Yeah, I'm sorry. All right, book six, building the garage now. I'm sorry guys. Can you see me? Am I working? Oh no, no, it was me. I totally fell. Yeah. My computer crashed. Restarted. It's not something it usually does. Maybe I should start a Patreon and see if we can put that towards extra gear. <laughs> I don't know. How do these things work? So, ooh, check that out. Check. Yep, I'm going to get myself distracted by Lego because that always helps me feel better in the events of uh, catastrophic collapse. Yeah, we've got the little helmet here. Okay, looking forward to this. Oh no, it was all on my end. Um, my computer crashed. I do apologise. truck was meant to be a six wide truck so I probably will build that one but let's start and we'll start as it says thank you thank you I've been thinking about that so something I should do oh we get a couple of cool little welding masks multiples I do remember seeing those on the cutter so yeah Hopefully the camera can pick those up. Check those out. Love the flames there. I assume she's got a name for our cartoon series. 
I'm not sure what it is. She's probably got legs somewhere too. Legs haven't turned. Oh, there they are. There are the legs. Alright. Getting on with some building. The fun stuff. It's always the fun stuff. So again, this is very definitely a playset. And there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but playsets are usually big on the play features, but they're not necessarily big on the realistic kind of details or the kind of thing that just neatly slides into a Lego city. And that's okay, because at some point it does absolutely come down to personal preference. My personal preference is very definitely for minifigure, highly detailed minifigure scale worlds. That's just what I like to see. So, amongst other little changes I'll absolutely make to this along the way, would be to the internal um, details for the world that these little minifigure guys are living in. Just to bring it down to scale, really. So that way, later at some point in time, I could get in there and, uh, well, photo photography, really. There we are. Starting to take shape. Because certainly, and this is a little parts intensive, one of the, the very easy things to help with that is take the studs away by tiling over. That's one of the reasons I'm a little stud phobic with my builds. And certainly on the be bench top there too, you've got to pick and choose where you put your studs. That way, for instance, if I want to twist a pizza box, I don't need to raise it on a stud like they've used here. Because once I get a camera in on that, it becomes very obvious. The studs are just very large when seen next to a minifigure. Uh, they add texture, which is beautiful, but you need to pick and choose when you want to deploy that, really. This, though, this is very nice. I like this. A little uh, drill press here. Check that out. Thank you for joining us, Matthew. Uh, look forward to seeing you soon. There we go. Yeah, I'm loving this. Check that out. That little. Uh... You know, way back when, I, my first vehicle was a motorcycle. I knew how to work on the stuff. I, I knew a couple of mechanics. I've got like a Cert 3 in mechanical engineering under my belt. Got it when I was a teenager. So a very long time ago. Um, but I should know the name, you know, as a result of that. Ah, tote stone. Tote stone. Alright. We need a little extra details here. And we do get, the uh, set does encourage us to put a little bit of tiling in, which is nice. I like that. And certainly what we'll end up with the, with the workshop is, you can see it on the box art, cars on this side, mechanic area on that side. So, you know, if you've ever stepped into a garage, well, most of them look like, really. But I'll go that little extra step and add in more tiling. Put that there for now. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, that's pretty stable. I'll work with it. A little computer. It's hard to see the print on that, but that is actually a printed tile. And see, the computer, that's absolutely one of those things that I will be adjusting how it looks. Uh, Lego Masters Series Season 2. Um, yeah, look, it was good. It was good. I knew more people in, in Season 2. I knew more people prior to them going in. Uh, I don't know if I should name the people I knew. But I enjoyed it. We watched. I 
they are. I'm not sure what to say about them. What did you think? What did you think, Brick Mayo? Season 1 was definitely better, I mean, it had me in it, right? That was awesome. <laughs> I don't know. Alrighty. So yeah, a few little nice details are coming in here for the garage. I haven't looked too close at the bits and bobs of the set. It's very open at the sides, that's not going to work to convert it into a Lego City kind of layout display, so that's one of those little things that will need to be changed along the way, but for now it'll work. It's going to be tricky actually, colour matching, I just do not have enough in the dark red, so I might need to flip some of those, it's a problem I had last week too, for extending the town hall. Oh. I don't even know, this is meant to be a town hall for Main Square? I'm assuming, but I might have that totes wrong. Alright. There's meant to be another tube here. I guess you go there. For now, it'll turn up. The area's getting a little crowded. Oh well, can wait. It's the kind of part that probably rolled on. Oh, I see it. It's over here in the bag. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting uh, to see what they do with season three. Uh. Oh, I meant to be there. Okay. They just put them on in different steps. Okay. They want me to sticker that one. I do like the idea of having a calendar in there, but I think I might save that because that would uh, go easily on to a 2x2 two two tile and a 2x2 two two tile sticking off the wall would work a little bit better. So that's one of those minor changes I think I'll make. I do like the idea of keeping the graffiti, uh, but I've got a cyberpunk build I'm kind of working on slowly, very slowly. So I might leave it because the intention for that kind of cyberpunk kind of build will be very definitely to have lots of um, those kind of printed or, or stickered graffiti walls as kind of texture. So, there you are. Alrighty. So this is pretty vanilla to what we're meant to have with yeah, I mean, apart from not putting on the stickers, that's what this bag gives us. We get quite a few little tools and bits and bobs, which is cool and awesome. Mm, and connect some of those. So I'll do it this way. Little fire hydrant. Little acetylene torch. Probably shouldn't have that part left over though. That should have gone somewhere. Yeah, doesn't matter, I guess. Doesn't matter. And yet here I am looking back through the book to see where I should have put it. Uh, Maybe not, I guess. Oh, it is here. Duh. Maybe if I just turned the next page, it would have been fine. Um. Nah, I'm not going to add those yet because that board is definitely coming away from underneath. And little things like fire extinguishers, they need to be connected to a wall in my, my opinion. You know, your mileage might vary. I ain't judging. So, bag nine. Let's go grab bag nine. Alright, bag nine here. Open it on up. 
I've got to be a bit more careful where I throw those things. The advantage of seeing them fly over, they do fly differently depending upon if there's still parts in them or not. So, there is a practical reason for it. I also enjoy throwing them around. Not gonna lie. Alrighty. Hmm. Coming together here. That probably needs to be a little bit more over here so you guys can actually see what I'm doing there. Um, interesting. Give a little bit of height to all of this. Get windows here, and that's probably going to be the easy way to fill in gaps around the edge of the building. Just use windows. Or maybe flip colours too. That old industrial style of building, you get a little bit more leeway. They don't need to be as decorative. They're meant to be functional. Yeah. Alrighty. Change the little there. Because certainly from the box art, it looks like the back and the side will be uh, open. And that's definitely something I'll need to shake up, change, to give it a bit more modular city standard. Nicely here. I like it. Probably about the right height to go to the roof too. There is a bit of a standard in terms of height for buildings with the modular sets. I, while not wanting to change it too much, it does need to belong next to those kind of buildings. So that means very tiny little changes do need to be made along the way. And sometimes that means height. Alrighty. Coming together. These little balls here, of course, are meant for our minifigure welding helmets. Which I, am, I remain very impressed by. They are beautiful little. I'm probably going to find a different use for them somewhere. They're the kind of thing that will work well as a background detail in, well, whatever, really. I feel up to the right height. Ah, I should not have put that there. Wrong one. All right. Coming together. One of the things I very definitely want to change is the way the door at the front works. The door at the front, it slides across. The kind of thing that works great for a playset, but the fact that it would extend to here, it's not something you'd ever see in the real world. So it needs to kind of fold in some way, and I figure the easiest change for that is hinges. Uh, I was thinking a concertina door that you could slide to one side, but as we get closer I guess I get to figure those little details out. Yeah, yeah, the door is definitely getting changed. Also, I believe, are about to be the play feature that helps you do stuff inside, which is very big and bulky. 
again one of those little things that just needs a little changing. I like the idea of having chains or something coming down from the roof to uh, help lift a car, whatever way, shape or form they take, but there's got to be a balance in the size of them. It needs to fit with a minifigure scale world in my opinion. these tiles mean that there will be a roof that will be able to be lifted off at some point in time. Well, that's what I'm assuming that means. The one last thing I probably will do to it, I suspect, like I want to put real lights in. And that's not as hard as it you might think. It just requires a little bit of planning, pre-planning to make it work. quite often use uh, Christmas lights in order to do it. I'll put the wrong part there. And there, that's, that's what we've got. That's pretty much the vanilla build. Sand stickers for this section. I feel like I shouldn't have these left over. I've done something silly again. Um, oh, street sign, of course. Street sign, yes. That I will stick up. Hello again, Liam. How are you doing, my man? Probably arriving at just the right time. You got to avoid the technical issues we had earlier. Street sign, that's the wrong thingy. Spray again. Probably need to wash this tablecloth anyway. Dribble a little along. There we go. And stick up. Gosh, that could be a challenge for the LEGO Masters Season 3. Most perfectly applied stickers. Hamish, off to the side, squirting them with uh, water guns. And similar, as they try to get a perfectly applied sticker, and then get out the slide rule to measure. Maybe cream pies. Cream pies coming left and right. Bit of extra clean up for the staff, but you know. Alright, yeah, there we go. Bag nine. And it's looking really good. Like, I like what we've got going on here. Uh, I like some of these details. There are little changes I definitely will make. Replace the 2x6, uh, I'm not even sure what colour that is properly. The tan, dark tan. Um, just to swap it out to tiles. That'll mean that I can go flush with the pizza uh, box put a coffee cup there, maybe something else that sits uh, on the table. Um, and here we have bag 10. And these uh, textured panels are the reason I was thinking that hinges and opening as garage doors might be the better option than uh, folding doors but I could still go folding doors it's just about the way you've got like this means that it would need to be uh, six long whatever I do so uh, for the section but yeah I, I think folding or opening oh, we'll get there we'll get there People do ask me about what happened with me and Bill's here. And you know what? Um, I'd rather not get my... Well, Mama always said if I've got nothing good to say about somebody, I shouldn't talk about them. So I don't talk about Bill's here. Uh, I will... Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll field other questions, I guess. But maybe not that. Yeah, I don't know. Be more specific, maybe. I mean, I hope he's getting the su success he deserves in whatever endeavour he's pursuing now. Uh, maybe not. I've moved on with my life. Uh, right. So this will be a mechanism to do something 
in a moment. Uh, I believe there's a, a car chain lift thing in this set as part of it. Might be the door. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't look too close. Um, this has been sitting in the rainy day cupboard for like a long time. I really should have pulled it out and done something with it long before now. But... not have been the long part, that should have been the 8. And <laughs> Alrighty, here we go, little bitty body beep interested to see how this all works or what it does in a moment. That's going to go there of course. Can't go many other places. Now this will probably also be the very first thing I rip out of the set and start changing into something else. But that's down the track. Because this is kind of meant to sit here, and I guess slide therefore, which is a great play feature. It is a great play feature, but uh, it's not the kind of thing I want in a display set. My favourite type of trooper. I guess we're talking stormtroopers here, right? Like, like, well, sorry, Star Wars. Which would? It'd be OG stormtroopers. Probably because that's what I grew up on. I don't know, yours? What about you, Liam? What's your favourite uh, trooper? Didn't even see that comment. Redacted? Yeah. <laughs> Probably safer, right? Alrighty, here we go. Got little bitty bobby bits coming together here for our mechanism. Something like this. Yeah. About as simple as a mechanism can get. All it needs to be. Right there, you have a chain, twist and roll, it'll come up, it'll go down. Which is a great play feature, but look at the size of that thing. It doesn't fit into a Lego City world. Like that's that's built for human hands, not minifigure hands. And that that's you know that, that idea of authenticity and realistic kind of look to it, that's what I want out of my sets. So. Any set, what would it be? Oh. There's a few coming down the pipe. I don't know, I, I didn't have anything on my birthday Christmas wish list. I do now. Um, there are a few. Like Diagon Alley, that looks gorgeous. And here we have a little car engine to go with. Now because I'm going to keep the tuning workshop feel to all of this, I'm going to apply the sticker there. Yeah, maybe. I, I, we did on the very first live stream I did, we did something similar for... Um, Liam just mentioned getting a couple of Lego sets and just getting the uh, audience to throw out challenges. Now, building's not exactly the quickest of affairs. I don't know if it's the most exciting thing to watch. Um, I mean, the advantage of TV is you can quite often edit and, and skip just the hands moving building bits. Uh, 
So, whereas if I was to turn the camera, you'd see all my spare parts. And, and watching me rub rummage through bins looking for parts isn't the most exciting thing in the world. Uh, but that's definitely something I, I have thought about, you know, the idea of taking on little Lego challenges. Because uh, most of the stuff around here is built pretty quick. But, I mean, the Mario head back there, he was... He's sitting on at least eight hours to get him to that point. And that's not including the... I mean, that's... In, sorry, that includes the bits that didn't work, the bits you don't see. And that's kind of what I mean. There's all those little bits... Like, do you want to see me try stuff that I'm like, oh, no, I really don't like that. I'm ditching that. You know, it makes it less exciting for you guys. Alrighty. I feel like I've got more parts than I should have. I guess I'm, that'll be the door, right? Which is going to be, oh yeah, pretty simple. So here we go, the door, which is 12 wide, or 12 long, and yeah, that completely falls away at the moment I move any of that, so I'm just going to throw it off to the side. Thank you, Brick Mania. I'm glad you enjoyed. Yeah, here we go. And certainly, if you open the door, open all the way, it hangs over a lot, and that's something I want to kind of... Well, fix is probably the wrong word. But I can slide it in there. And yeah, let's change that up a little bit. Alright. Alright, putting that off to the side for now. Here I have a 32 by 32 base plate. Keeping in mind that I want this to fit alongside my park and, and, and keeping the theme going from last week I'll put the town hall here I'm going to keep calling it the town hall I don't know where it's meant to be um, and then put our little tuning workshop here the tuning workshop is quite wide so I think it does need to be a full base plate devoted to it maybe not that much depth though I'm not sure I want more of a yard out front and certainly the modular standard means I will need uh, a certain number of bricks out front of it just for the footpath alone. Got some bricks I prepared earlier. Quite possibly literally the only thing I prepared earlier that I found the tiles I would need for the sidewalk. Just to put that space in. And I'm thinking fences up by the side. Well, let me step that back a bit. B talking building tips and tricks. This is pretty simple and easy, but blocking stuff in. So I kind of, like what am I going to build here? I don't know yet. I've got a bit of a loose idea, but it's not a very polished idea at this point in time. I want to keep the idea of a used car a lot. I want to keep the idea of the garage workshop itself. I like the little dog house. So I can just kind of plonk them down into various spaces. And if I hadn't built these earlier, I'd probably be plonking them down just placeholders. Oh, a used car lot. You need cars in a used car lot. Okay, well that brick separates is one. That's another one. What do I reckon? How does this kind of line up in terms of space? I'm wondering if maybe this needs to be a double base plate. And certainly that makes it, again, a little easier for me. Um, so... Yeah, um, and thank you, Liam. That is that's that's lovely to hear. Thank you. Glad you're enjoying. I'm very new to this, so I will accept any feedback you've got. And if there's more that you want to see, you know, I'll, I'll certainly make that happen. Like something specific. If there's certain tips, tricks, whatever you want to cover off. I'm just going to clear these away for now. And yeah, do I want to go for, you know, 
tuning garage here, then a little bit of a used car depot. I need, well, I, I need what would approximate a fence line here. I'm definitely going to need a fence line coming down along here. And if I go only a single base plate, a another fence line along the other side. I like the idea of this being not the not necessarily the nice part of town, not the bad part of town, but certain sets have a lot more polish to them. This isn't the kind of thing I think would be next to the uh, the Paris restaurant, a Parisian restaurant. Did I just get the name right? I can't remember. Uh, but it is the kind of thing I think would work well next to the detective's office and I might end up putting the detective's office down on that side and the cinema on this side and then I'll just work something up for the rear. Um, I can't remember how this palace cinema looks on its rear side because you would see the rear side if I did it that way. Um, but yeah, I can block this in here. Yeah, definitely. I think shave a little bit of depth off that, that makes it easier for me when, in terms of the tuning workshop here. I think I'll change the colour of the tile out front to a, a step or a mat. Um, keep the idea of the tiles maybe or a ramp. Need something there to kind of... Res maybe tile. No, it depends how we set up the doors. I definitely like the idea of the dog hut. Uh, but that'll need more terrain around it, and that's pretty easy to spin out. Just uh, some simple little ta dark tan plate, uh, but you need to shake it up a little. Uh, you can shake up colours. Making, again, organic ground is one of those things people do ask a lot about, different techniques to make uh, nature textures work. Like how do you make water work? How do you make ground work? How do you make rock work look good in Lego? And the answer I always come back with when I see those kind of questions or hear, get asked those kind of questions is what kind of rock work or what kind of ground because uh, a mountain cliff face doesn't have the same texture as a say a riverbank um, the effects that water has running over and eroding a surface can change or a pile of rocks um, you know there's, there's oh, there's geological terms for the rocks. Uh, I think it's uh, metamorphic, isni igneous, and something else. I, I don't know. There's three terms. I'm not. I'm not a geologist. I can tell you how they look because certainly you know you get out in the world and you look. So here, for instance, that idea of there's a dog that lives here. It's not a well tended garden. That didn't mean rough ground. And so certainly you want a little bit of rough texture to go with it. And that's the kind of place where I think studs belong. But you need to vary the height just a little. Using one by one rounds and squares and maybe a few cheese slopes here and there, a few angled bricks. That's how you can kind of very quickly... I'm probably going off on a technical ram, um, tangent that's not making necessarily as much sense out loud as I think it is. So I'm going to get back to the building and the shaping here. We had a tiny little bike. We've got two little bikes. Ditch that there. So our caravan's going in here. The big changes I need to make are for our tuning workshop here at the back. I'm going to shave the height off, or depth off it, I think, by at least four studs. Uh, I think that's probably actually the right depth there. Let's put it in. Rick and Morty. Uh, no, I haven't really watched much Rick and Morty. I don't watch much TV at all, honestly. A little bit. It's the last thing I watched. See, having kids in the house, the kids kind of control the TV. So I get only to watch really what they want to watch. Um, and they're not, like, they're young kids. So uh, anything I watch also needs to be appropriate for them if I watch it in front of them. So yeah, that's that's why this week we binge watched the entire Lego City Adventures cartoon series, because that's kid appropriate. All right, so carefully breaking bits apart. I don't want to shatter it. Let's 
probably inevitable, but I want to just kind of take enough away for now. That's a tram stop falling over over there. Alright, so lift it up. Going to break out the back. And I'm going to start playing with the idea of how much depth I can take from this. Here might be good. That leaves me a lot of room at front. That might actually be better. Go, if I go back even further... Yeah, yeah I think that's what I might do. Because that gives me plenty of yard out front. I, the details inside are going to get lost anyway. I can make that permanently closed, our garage doors. I might shake up the garage doors regardless. Just to make them a little prettier. Sorry, burping. Oh, Bluey. We are huge fans of Bluey in this house. Like, we have what so much Bluey. Yourself? Uh, I'm guessing you are. I I'm just automatically assuming everybody's a Bluey fan at this point, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how deep I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to probably make some parts I need to do this a lot easier to a degree. I will need more of these, though, for window sills below and above. Maybe just below. So, I think I can do this, though. Yeah. Yeah, we get to... I mean, it's just one of those things that's safe to watch in front of the kids. And, uh, I enjoy it. I love it. I love me blue. Alright. Small changes to the sides. Now because I am adapting this for modular standard, there will in a moment need to be the technique bricks, but they'll be on the fence line. So that makes it a life a little easier. Likewise, I can't have anything overlapping on this wall. So, right at the back because I need a few minor parts. So I'm going to keep the windows because I've already got them here. Close up that gap on that wall, but keep it flush. I can't have even the rail would overlap too much. So that's not going in there. I wonder if I have enough dark red bricks to make this work. I've got some of the profiles, but that might not be enough. And yeah, with that slightly smaller space inside, it will mean I want to keep some of the little details for our workshop bench. Like I said, I'm going to swap what's on top of the bench. But that lines up. I still need a rear wall. So, maybe this. Yeah, it kind of works. No, I feel like that's getting a little too high. Um, so. and I do want to keep the idea of a, I don't know, like looking forward through this set, you're going to see through that open glass door. That, that's going to get a whole lot of light through it. So it needs just enough internal detail to make it look like something. What that ends up looking like, I'm not sure, it, I, a reception desk or something. It will still need to be there in some shape. Um. <laughs> yes, yes. 
wish uh, Dad happy uh, happy Father's Day from me. Um, I'm wearing my Father's Day jock shocks, uh, jocks and socks right now. The chocks are over there. Um, yeah, you know the Father's Day tradition, right? Happy Father's Day uh, to Dad from me. Enjoy, Liam. See you uh, soon. So I'm going to need a bit of roof, and bringing it in line is going to be part of the trick here. I've liked the rail above and below, so I'm going to look for more rails. Here we are. This tub should have some in, or not. We'll find out in a moment. Yep, one. Now hopefully the sound doesn't come through too loud. I hope it doesn't. Ah, there it is. Two rails. Very easy to find. So, there we go. I'm definitely going to need more... Let's say thicken up. I can thicken up the walls instead. That'd work. So you get to make choices about what happens on the back. I don't know how visible it's going to be. I could use... Like, I've had this sitting around half-built for a while. Uh, yeah, looking... Same time next week, I think, Liam. So, looking forward to seeing you then. You know, reading from you then. Ah, oh. has has English lame as a language caught up with that yet? Like we text one another and contact, and that's a perfectly viable way of connecting with others in this day and age. But I don't think we've got language for it yet. You know, I've got friends halfway across the world who I probably never will meet in person. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm, I'm wondering if I should use something graffiti-ish on the rear wall there, or just rip it apart and, and use it for something else. I don't know, that, that kind of rear wall idea. Maybe keep some windows in there. Whatever it is, it won't get seen too much, so I can be very light on how I choose to use the parts. Um, I think my smartest way to do this will be... Where did that go out from? There. And I do want to keep the street lamp. It just doesn't belong in that spot. I think it does need a step. These are details that I guess will come in a moment. Um, now though, let's sort these sides out. A little bit of dark blue there. And then I'll make life easy and I can start connecting up. Keeping what's already there in the set to basically finished up. And I need something to finish off the top of the roof. Be right back. See, I think this is the less exciting part. Watching me fish for parts, I adjust stuff, and, and make those decisions on the fly. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. Well, you know, most days, I don't know what I'm doing. So, and a lot of it is really just that process of experimentation. Oh, yeah, I like the look of that. I'll keep that. I'll ditch that. You know, they adjust as you go along. Um. So yeah, there we go. And then it's a matter of locking it back in for the roof. So, and that's not going to cover that kind of gap. I did like the colouring. I want to keep that, or at least enough of that. get to talking about the texture bits. That might be a bit more fun. I don't know. I, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, there's a few people watching, so, um, you know, let me know. Heck, 
what would you guys like to see out of this, you know? We can take it in any direction you want. Um, let me know. And that's, that's what the comments stuff is for. Alright, finding a few more little ready bits. I think to keep it in line with the other sets, we probably do need to keep the basic colours for the fence. Like, for the other two sets, or, or main square, which is determined the other two um, modded parts we've got over there. They had this on the lower level, but the dark red. I don't know if that's right. I'm thinking maybe the grey actually, the profile bricks instead, which means I need to introduce technicals. Right. So get this started there. Well actually again keeping what we've got for most of the set. So nine in, nine in, that's where our little so that adapts it to the modular standard there alrighty now this is going to be too long to cover the gap I'm going to either need another pillar in between or find another way around that I'm uh, going to need something to cover there and that gives me plenty of room to put in our little doggy House. I'm going to start by using what we've already got established here. I will need a slight positioning change to get flush with the wall. I'm going to leave the rear stud open just so I can put a fence along the back line. And I'll show you what I meant about using texture for. I really want to angle this actually. And that's not too hard. There are, I'd say Pythagorean triples, but then your eyes are just going to glaze over, right? But Pythagorean triples are a way of making uh, things all of a sudden not be straight on the grid. Let me show you. So, basically right angled triangles. And did I do that right? not finding it today. If I lined you up right, there is five, four, three? No. I think that's it. Nah. I'm just not finding the Pythagorean triples. Apparently I need to eat properly so I can think better. But there are neat ways of finding the Pythagorean triples on the base plate to connect. And it requires math to do it properly, which I'm just not thinking clearly apparently today. And that's probably why. There we are. There we are. Found it. I knew it was yeah close enough. Six long pl uh, tile. Oh, plate will do it as well. And a stud. That is secure as you can possibly make a connection. I believe this might have now appeared in some official sets. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it it's, does require a little extra bit of engineering to hide the gaps and seams, but you can keep that extending across. So that same triple will extend to that direction and, and so on and so forth. So you can line up something that is not straight to the grid and yet still have a perfectly se secure connection there. There are plenty more Pythagorean triples as well to be explored and discovered. Uh, but now though, let's just make a little bit more texture here happen underneath and yeah, I'm gonna think about how I connect our little doggy house. Cause I would like it to be on the angle. And I can do that, but it does mean adjusting what's underneath either swapping to tiles or something else. So let's see if I've got sufficient tiles to make that work. And I could... I'll be right back.
here I have a big pile of tan. So if you start playing with the ideas of tan texture back in that back corner, just bring in a little detail. So this is the other thing. This is this is a bit difficult to do on a more experimental scale. William, who's now left us, was asking about uh, seeing basically Lego Challenges live. And I don't know if that would be ex as exciting as you might think, but I'm open to suggestions here because I, I kind of take my abilities for granted and other people think it's magic, so um, up to you guys. You know, it's more than just me. So let's kind of give a little texture and just make sure I've got enough underneath to kind of That'd be a wing, a wedge. I always think of them as wings. Basic beginning. I'm gonna take the doggy mat back inside. I need a one by four. But now, with this in mind, I can tile underneath. I did have some tiles nearby. I've also got everything I need to get perfect Pythagorean triples happening underneath. So there is the question of which studs I connect it to, of course. Everybody's getting a little bored. Me included, maybe. People drop it off. This is the more. See, this is the stuff where a lot of decision making needs to happen along the way. You know? And I don't know what it's going to look like until I do it. And I don't know if that's exci as exciting to watch as, as I might think. That's the magic of, of being on something like Lego Masters. They get to edit out all the boring bits. And this is certainly part of more, a little bit more. Yeah, see? to move the doghouse over a little bit. And I've got a nice texture kind of happening. You can see kind of what I've got going on there. Um, and that gives me room to put the tree in because I like the idea of keeping the tree. And if I angle it just a little, and I might cheat that, to angle it, I'm going to feed some flex tube up. So it keeps everything solid and together, but flex tube is meant to flex. That's why it's called flex tube. And then I'll be able to kind of bend stuff around there and just have a, a lone kind of straggly kind of tree just kind of there in the corner. Bring in some extra tiles there. And prepare more for next week so that if we end up back in this spot of like, oh, what am I going to do with this? I'll at least have a little bit more of a clue because I feel like I should have prepared. You know, well, I'm thinking clearly, rather than I'm gone for. Her. And this is what I mean about that lines up well. I want to keep some of that area for texture, not too much. Um, and I'll be able to layer up texture here as well. A few different ways to do that. Keep that there. Yep, that's what I need. That works well. Just 
making sure I get all the spots for. I don't have many one by ones in the tile, so that's going to be troublesome in a moment. There's only tiles will fit under this. interested people watching want to see specific things. I feel like this is a little less entertaining for everybody. I think I said that earlier. But drop something in the chat. What would you guys like to see? What excites you guys? What, uh, what do you want to see? Kind of with this, you know? Or do you just want to See me pouring through tubs of Lego, kind of figuring out, oh, what should I build next? Like, where's that one by two time? I don't know if that's the most exciting thing in the world, but, you know, who am I to judge? <coughs> cool. This lays down out underneath. I think I'm going to still need something for that corner. Of one by ones because I do not have, and you know, oh no, nah, that's a cheese slope, but that'll work. I'm gonna put that cheese slope in there. Hopefully, it sits with enough clearance that doghouse sits on top, and then we'll start covering over the gaps that I have kind of created underneath. much texture on here. Too much help. Just a little bit. So it kind of looks organic like a a real kind of patch of dirt would look. You can bring in other colours. I when using dark tan I like to use the light tan and dark grey underneath. That's a colour scheme I find works for that kind of rough um, dirt look. But you need to be sparing, like a colour change or a text change. You can't get too multicoloured with it. You do need to be balanced with how you approach it. And given that we've got working to a dark grey plate underneath, bringing in that, that hint of rock above it can be a good thing too. You know, them sticking out. Maybe a weed here and there, who knows. Um, I am going to put the tree up in the back corner. I've got to figure out how that connects down. So, at the moment, I'm really just leaving space to allow that to happen. Rather than going all in on whatever that ends up looking like. So, uh, Got this uh, all in a all in the same brickling quarter. I think it was probably says volumes about the kind of brickling quarters I do. I don't know. I should talk a little quieter. My missus might watch this. She'll kill me. So often. It's Father's Day. I think I'm immune from that today, right? No killing your partners on Father's Day. Should be a rule. So there we go. A bit of extra texture here. Yeah, enough. You, you don't want to have too heavy a hand with this anyway. Uh, I want another wedge maybe to go in that corner. Yeah, this goes. Well, that's not going to fit. 
Dirt, keeping it real, it blows in the wind. You know, the wind picks it up, it carries it, it deposits it. And that's usually not very high. That means, for instance, if you've got a wall or a fence, which I'm going to have here on the edges, that's the kind of place the wind will deposit dirt. So to give it that natural look, that's one of those things I think works. You know, as you layer, comes up a little bit more near the walls and then kind of drops away into holes and eddies elsewhere. I guess that's what a lot of this is, you know, this, this Lego building. It's, it's just about how you see the world and, and certainly opening your eyes and being open to the world and experiencing it and just reflecting on it and then trying to recreate and, in, and enjoy and live in those spaces. Now for me that's a, what a lot of Lego is about, or, or creating with Lego. Creating the kind of worlds I'd want to live in. Um, I wonder if I should bring in a little extra texture. The tree at the back, once I get that in there, that'll change everything anyway. I feel like I need a little bit of a stronger, firmer base than is allowed for by just flex tube. That looks a little too simple for me. So I'm probably going to shake that up just a little. Not too much, just a little. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should call it for the day. Coming up on 6 o'clock. And it is Father's Day, so I probably should go spend some time with my little boy who has been uh, kicking my butt at pull your pull your Tetris today. Very well. He has got really good at that game. And I am soups impressed. And jealous, just a little bit jealous of his elite skills. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of, I guess, yeah, might leave it there. I'll have a little bit more of a build with this after I've kind of eaten, had something to drink, had a bit of a think about it. I'll show it to you at the beginning of next week's live stream. So, to give you a bit of an idea, again, really the approach to this was modding the set, not creating a brand new mock. So I want to keep, at the very least, the heart and soul, or, or, or the essence of the original set. So I might find a way to slide in our 50% uh, off thingy here at the front. I don't want to block the door to our garage though. I, I think that would be wrong. So our door is here. That camera's not necessarily... Let's see if this works. Does this work? Oh, that might have broken stuff. I don't know. There's a bit of a lag, so... Um, I hope that didn't break stuff. But hopefully that angle picks it up a little bit more. So the caravan out here fr in front. I might need to adjust that a little as well. It is a little large. I, I think the trick might just be changing that because I do want to have that view towards our little doghouse here going on. Um, it might be as simple as swapping the sides. I don't know. And this is the thing. I'm just going to have a bit of a play with the feel of stuff. I've certainly got an idea for how I want the fence to look. I do want it to be open. Um, so grill. Uh, hopefully I've got some of the old school soccer nets over there, maybe. Um, or, or chain together a couple of the uh, iron grill doors, something like that, or ladders maybe, uh, that'll create the fence. I'd like something that has a bit of a, a chicken wire feel, you know, like cheap, not necessarily the best part of town, um, but certainly not the dodgiest either, somewhere in between. Something that fits a, a used car, garage, auto lot. Does need a roof. But again, that, that's just flat. Uh, I might add a few little extra details to it, like an air conditioning unit. Not too much. Uh, again, keeping in theme with the original set here. Fix up the gates or, or doors to the, I don't know, the garage doors. 
but they're that big it doesn't sound like they should just be called doors but gates is also the wrong word um, I think what I'm going to do there though, I'm going to swap it out for smaller swap it out for those size windows bring in a little bit of extra detail swap up what happens underneath and below probably keep the texture but by doing that I will have the option of opening it just enough that you can see our uh, mechanic working on the car inside and use that as a detail. That might be what I end up going with. Because at the moment, there's not really enough room on this particular base plate for a couple of used cars. And I'm wondering if that's what I should change up. And, and possibly by bringing in another of the base plates and turning it into a corner block on this side and then being able to put road around the edge and that will open up the space to create the cars that I still haven't done and put in there I feel like I'm talking to myself here um, I don't know I remain in awe of how radio presenters do this the pitter patter chatter. Anyway, so I, I think, yeah, gonna leave it there for now. We'll be back again next week. I had intended to do, take a big change of direction next week. I'm thinking some of the Monkey Kids sets. I'm loving the new Monkey Kids sets. I'm not exactly impressed with the cartoon series. Um, it's experimental I don't know I, I I like the idea that they've tried something new and experimental with it but it's a little frenetic and lack and, and it's just a little too overtly uh, a, a toy commercial like there's a real heart and soul to Ninjago I love Ninjago and I think I've said a few times during today's stream that I love uh, Lego Lego City Adventures can be found on Netflix. It's the cartoon series that both of these sets tie into. I wasn't impressed with Monkey Kid, but I am impressed with the sets, and I really want to explore the possibilities for where they can go. And I'm thinking that that means a cyberpunk kind 